My name is Al, and today we're comparing ZBrush Core Mini and Blender. We also have a very special guest today. That's right, the one, the only, Ryan King joins us. So Ryan King made this awesome whale sculpt a few months back, and I knew I had to try my hand at it. So my attempt is on the left in ZBrush Core Mini, and his is on the right in Blender. So be sure to check out Ryan's channel, linked it in the description below, but you all probably already know, he's got a great channel. Okay, so starting off with the OG, Ryan is on the right. Ryan's going to start with a couple primitives, a sphere and a cube. He'll be using some hard surface modeling techniques just to box model the main shape of that tail. In ZBrush Core Mini, you can't do that. You have to start with a sphere and you're going to end with essentially what is a sphere that's been deformed. And I'm using the snake hook just to pull and kind of nudge back and forth to get the shape of that tail. Honestly, Ryan's approach is going to be a lot more controlled, so it's not going to get all willy-nilly. Um, you can see there are quite a few lumps on my sculpt on the left, but in Ryan's, things are very, very smooth. He's going to add some sort of subdivision modifier to this thing, smooth this out, and continue just manipulating the vertices until he can really nail down the shape of that tail. In Core Mini on the left, I have dove into the eyes already. I've got the tail kind of blocked in. I really like the shape of the tail in Core Mini. I've got the fins, and now I'm doing the eyes. I wasn't super happy with it. I used the clay buildup brush, carved in where that orbital socket would be, and then carved out, carved out. That's not a thing. You know, use clay build up, build up the eye. Ryan has done the front fins. Things are looking great. He has two pieces still. He has the main body with the two front fins and then he has the tail. It's all connected. In Blender, you can press Shift R. That'll give you the voxel remesh kind of grid. That'll give you a great, great uh, idea of how large the polygons will be. I love that feature inside of Blender. And then you can press Control R on your keyboard as long as you're in sculpt mode. That's actually gonna like weld these two pieces together after you've joined them. Ryan goes in and he adds some of those uh, standard brush strokes back and forth over that, similar to clay buildup, and he's gonna smooth out the transition between the body and the tail. I got rid of some of the the details under the eye, I just thought it was too much detail. It was starting to look a little bit creepy. So I smoothed some of that out. I used H polish around the eyelid just to give it a more distinct look. In ZBrush Core Mini, if you need to make large changes to your mesh, we can use the move brush with a large draw size and just push and pull. So I squashed the eyes in. I felt he was a little too bug-eyed there. Things are looking better. I used the slash brush inside of ZBrush Core Mini just to define where the color differentiation would be from the blue and the white at the bottom. Uh, there's no painting inside of ZBrush Core Mini, none whatsoever. So Blender definitely has it beat uh, eventually on this sculpt. I'm using the slash brush to get kind of those cuts on the bottom of the whale. I have no idea what they're called. Inside of Blender, he's smoothing out the fin, getting the shape that he wants, using the pinch brush to really pinch in the sides of the fins there. Don't forget you can hold shift inside of Blender, do whatever smoothing you want, regardless of what brush you have. But things are looking very clean over on Ryan's sculpt. This part was a nightmare inside of Core Mini. So eventually when I get to the water spout, essentially what I have to do is just pull out a chunk from the top of the whale where the blowhole is, pull it up using snake hook and just pull, uh, pull out the shape from there and <laughs> try my best to make it look like water. ZBrush Core Mini does not allow you to add other shapes, period. So I cannot add another mesh whatsoever. But what I can do is use snake hook, pull, 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 pull. And then with a larger brush size, I can hold shift and smooth to separate. And then I have one piece of geometry that's disconnected and then the other spout. So I can kind of fake it a little bit, uh, as you can see in the video, but it's it's really, really tough. Bouncing back to Blender. It's using that draw sharp tool inside a Blender. Carve out the mouth, looking super, super cute. It's using just normal sculpting tools to beef up the lips, make it seem a little bit more real. If Ryan had just left that slash in uh, the front of the face that's all it would have looked like just like a cut that it didn't it wouldn't feel like lips i'm glad ryan went in there added the illusion that there are some lips there and just some more meat just grounds it a little bit more in reality on the left in my sculpt i am still still fumbling with this water spout trying to make it look water like paying attention to gravity like what would water look like coming out it's spraying up and then it needs to curve down kind of like ryan's but anytime i need to make uh adjustments to this thing i'll use a larger move brush squish pull that around in core mini you also have to be very careful since it's all one mesh there's no masking. There's nothing like that. Any pieces of your sculpt that are like close together, uh, it's really hard to manipulate. So if I have like uh, teeth and then lips, for example, on a character, it's really hard to move the lips because I'll I inevitably 
and Core Mini will move the teeth as well. The blender definitely has Core Mini beat in that regard, uh, simply because there's masking in Blender. You can add multiple objects in Blender. Definitely a plus. Bouncing back to Ryan's, we have uh, added a cylinder for the blowhole, uh, right in the blowhole for the water. And this was a piece of cake for Ryan to come in, extrude this cylinder, pull it out, get the shape, you know, add a subdivision modifier, whatever it is inside of Blender. Things are looking really, really great. Since he can work in multiple objects, he can just copy and paste these little chunks of the water, move them around. Ryan nailed it on this part. Obviously, after you have those pieces in Blender, that's where we do our voxel remesh, fuse them all together, smooth out that transition, make it look nice and clean. Things are looking good. Eventually, in Ryan's second video, which isn't shown here, but he goes through and gives this whale kind of like a clay material, um, which is super, super dope. You'll see it in the finished render. But you can't do that in Core Mini. So what I had to do was use the H polish brush and really just kind of destroy the surface a little bit as gently as possible, just to give it the illusion that this is not perfectly smooth. There are some indentions, some imperfections to kind of give it that, you know, hand sculpted feel. It's very limiting inside of Core Mini. For what it's worth, uh, I actually like the finished result of Core Mini. I think it looks okay. Definitely not as good as Ryan's. You'll have to tell me what you think down below. 